A Musical Instrument by Elizabeth Barrett Browning What was he doing, the great god Pan, down in the reeds by the river? Spreading ruin and scattering ban, splashing and paddling with hooves of a goat, and breaking the golden lilies afloat with the dragonfly on the river. He tore out a reed, the great god Pan. From the deep cool bed of the river, the limpid water turbidly ran, and the broken lilies a dying lay, and the dragonfly had fled away, ere he brought it out of the river. High on the shore sate the great god Pan, while turbidly flowed the river, and hacked and hewed as the great god can, with his hard bleak steel at the patient reed, till there was not a sign of a leaf indeed to prove it fresh from the river. He cut it short, did the great god Pan, how tall it stood in the river, then drew the pith like the heart of a man, steadily from the outside ring, and notched the poor dry empty thing, in holes as he sate by the river. This is the way, laughed the great god Pan, laughed while he sate by the river, the only way since gods began, to make sweet music they could succeed, then dropping his mouth to a hole in the reed, he blew in power by the river. Sweet, 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 O oh Pan, piercing sweet by the river, blinding sweet, O oh great god Pan, the sun on the hill forgot to die, and the lilies revived, and the dragon fly came back to dream on the river. Yet half a beast is the great god Pan, to laugh as he sits by the river, making a poet out of a man, the true gods sigh for the cost and pain, for the reed which grows never more again, as a reed with the reeds in the river. The title of this poem, A Musical Instrument, played an integral role in ancient Greece. The first stanza begins with a rhetorical question. Pan is the Greek god of pastures, rustic wilderness, and music. He is half man, half goat. Violent diction, including ruin, splashing, and breaking, describe Pan's actions. Lilies in Greek mythology represent innocence and purity. Dragonflies can symbolize peace and harmony. The poem has a rhyme scheme of A, B, A, C, C, B that creates its musical cadence. Dixon's choice of tor and turbidly juxtaposed limpid, emphasizing the innocence of nature, contrasting with the guilty pan. Limpid means clear, while turbid means murky, acting as an oxymoron. Innocence, purity, peace, and harmony have now left. Great God can now be seen as repetitive irony. Again, Dixon's choice of hacked, hewed, hard, bleak, and steel creates a juxtaposition with patient. A simile is employed relating Pan's destruction of nature with the removal of a heart in a sacrifice. Poor, dry, and empty create an innocent depiction of nature. Pan's laughter represents seizing power. It is ironic that a seemingly horrible act of destruction can create such sweetness. This stanza shifts to a rapturous tone. Piercing sweet can be seen as an oxymoron. The personification of the sun shows nature's regaining of strength. Innocence, peace, purity, and harmony return ironically. Pan's status as half goat, half human sums up his actions were not 100% evil or virtuous. Great God can definitely be seen as ironic. There is now a clear critical tone. The repetition of Great God Pan at the end of the first line that has nine syllables in each stanza, along with the second and last lines ending in river, creates a rapid musical flow. The Greek God Pan destroys nature to create a musical instrument. The poem was published in 1860 during the Victorian era in England. The audience is those interested in Greek culture and mythology. The poem expresses the theme that beauty cannot coexist without destruction. The author, Elizabeth Barrett Brown was seriously sick most of her life. The poem is told in third person. The tone of the piece is critical to Pan and the destruction of nature.